Friends, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about painting the streets. So what does it mean to paint the streets? Well, in short, taking the perspective of a painter and translating it into the photo world. Over the years, I began to notice other types of techniques from brilliant photographers like Saul Leiter, Daido Moriyama, and Olga Karlowitz. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, just this beautiful, calm sense of visual poetry. It looked more like a painting than it did a photo. And it came down to things like long exposures, intentional camera movement, foggy, misty windows or weather, rain, steam. These are some of the elements that all of those photographers had in common, even though they were all different in their style. And so now that I had my inspiration from photographers, it was only natural that I looked outside of photography and into the art world because I thought that was a natural progression. So instead of looking for specific painters, I thought it would be better just to first understand the movements. And so I wrote a quick list of those movements, abstract, impressionism, expressionism. There's many other movements, cubism, some contemporary art as well. So that leaves us with one main part left to talk about, which is the technical part. As much as we want to be artistic, if we have an idea with the baseline settings of what we want to achieve, it's always going to help our final results. So ideally, you would want a small aperture like f16, or f22, and that is to keep things from being overexposed because we are going to use slower shutter speeds. One tenth of a second to one second was a pretty good range at getting those feelings. Again, adjust to your liking. Now ISO, I'm thinking in the mid range. So ISO 400, ISO 800, you are doing longer exposures. So you don't need as much light. That's the technical part. We got the technical out of the way. Now I have a bonus tip that I want to add that I thought about just a few minutes ago that is a part of this painter-esque like image that we're going to create. Cropping is probably the easiest way to achieve that with images you've already created. So let's hop into Lightroom, take a quick look at a few images that I've already created, but I'm going to just crop in quickly and see the results that I get from it. I don't really know how it's going to look, but we can always try. Okay, so we're in Lightroom. So you don't necessarily have to go out and shoot. You might have some images already in your hard drive somewhere in your archives that could work. So we'll just go through a few right here that I'm seeing. And I think, yeah, this one for sure you could do something. Let's just go here and just original. Okay, let's put it in a square for now. Let's put it in a square. And ultimately what I'm trying to do is create a new story that is more like a painting. Yeah, like this. I mean, this is this seems safe and obvious right now, but it is my first time trying something like this. So I'll do this for now. And already it feels pretty cool because I've never done anything like this really. And I'm just taking down the clarity and messing with the dehaze and I'll mess with a few other things here. Nope. I want that texture for sure. Let's see what happens. Bring some clarity back. Dehaze. Yes. Contrast. So within a few seconds here, I'm almost somewhere brand new. Uh, maybe I'll fix my crop a bit just to balance it out. And of course you could do whatever you want. This is just me trying. I like it. If this is the first thing that I'm doing and I already enjoy it, imagine if I went out with that intention of doing it, that would be fantastic. So got that one. Let's hop over to another one here. I might just do that one. One second. Where is it? Okay, here we are. Perfect. Again, this image was some image I took a few years back, but I'm looking and already if I just change my, I'll take this off for a second and I'll keep it like that. 
maybe four by three. Let's check, check four by three. Okay, that's a decent composition. I'm seeing this gentleman. If I could do something around here, maybe tilt it to give it some something different. No, I don't like that. Let's not tilt it. Let's go back to straight. You know, you try to be different to be different and didn't work. Okay, didn't work. So I love this. Again, I guess there's a pattern from that first image to this one where we are using these silhouettes, but also using that glass to help us create an image. But this is already an image that I, I, I had made and that there was no intention of doing something like this. So to make it feel like a painting, I'm going to have to do some work here. But these are just, I'm moving the, 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 the gliders here, the sliders, the gliders. Um, and it feels pretty cool. I guess I could go black and white if I wanted to. Wow, that's beautiful too. Maybe get this out of here, WW something. Yeah, this is, this is pretty cool. So I don't know what I'm doing, but I know that it feels pretty cool. And it's definitely feels like I could improve once. I go out with intention and understand my settings. Okay, so there you have it, a couple of Lightroom examples of cropping and how it can change your images into these painting-like images. A really simple technique that's probably overlooked or shunned a lot of times because you do lose some quality, but this is a painting when you pull back and if you edit it correctly, you might have something special based off of work you already have. You don't even have to go out and recreate that stuff. So just recapping this video, we explored the idea of taking the perspective of a painter and translating it into the photo world, which I think is so refreshing, uh, especially for myself, because it gets the thoughts out of my mind about, well, have I hit a wall? Am I out of new concepts to shoot? And I don't think you are. I think you limit yourself when you speak like that as opposed to just trying new things. That's exactly what we did today. Um, lots of inspiration and this is just a few shoots. These are just a few images that I've looked through. I'm sure there are hundreds that I did unintentionally, but now I can go in there with knowledge and some kind of focus and go out there and whether the weather is perfect or if it's kind of lousy, we are able to create beautiful images that look different than some of our other work, but they all feel the same. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one.